Now sending people to the baby cage into the shadow realm. Let's send it back to the couch to see what they think about that one. I want to bring back the Pabu Melfight. That, that's what I want. <laughs> uh, this Pabu Melfight, mm. best Pabu of all time. You know, forget when he beat Rookie and all those other, oh, like the, the nobodies that he yeah. beat at All Stars. When he qualified for the OPL the first time, Maokai, Malphite, bring back the hard tanks for Pabu. Best huh? Pabu is coloured hair Pabu. Why, why, where did the blue go? He's just laughing. <laughs> he doesn't want to answer. He's literally fallen out of the room, <laughs> toppled over I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he just, like, he wanted to change. You know, he was sick of, he's sick of the blue, wanted to go back to normal because his hair's black, obviously. Obviously. And he just, he's dark Pabu. Now that I'm a man, I've put childish things behind me. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. As soon as you beat Faker and Rookie and Double Lift, he's yeah. like, all right, like, like, the all fun right. and games is over. Now Leveled it's real up. time. There yeah. we go. All right. Speaking of fun and games, though, it's time for OPL Couch. Uh, Here we go. <laughs> no, so what we're doing today, Okay. we okay. wanted to celebrate the Ash comic. So have you guys been reading the Ash comic? Absolutely not, no. We're no. on the third issue. The fourth one is coming soon. Uh, let me give you a little, uh, a little heads up of what the Ash War Mother comic is, the first League of Legends comic from the partnership between Rival Marvel and Riot Games. We return to Ash's origins, where she's burdened by her mother's expectations. Oh, I wonder what Rough. her mother did. Well, like, her mother she, was like, did she run a the small business or something of the uh, clan? Wasn't okay. she? I have literally no idea. Like that sounds about right. I'm pretty sure. Oh, she's small from business the thing or the chieftain thing? No, not anything. Because okay, right. I'm just wondering, maybe she wanted to like, you know, work in the family <laughs> mill or whatever it is you did back then. <laughs> yeah. Make, no, I'm make pretty sure like she knives. was like, and put then an apple on your head. Ash went somewhere <laughs> and then like found some like sacred bow, and then a village was on fire. And then she came back and was like. Whoosh, whoosh, and put and it out like, with the, I'll put it out with like, cold dust. Wow, yeah. that's like a sacred bow. You should be our chieftain now. Oh, yeah, I, right. I think I'm paraphrasing, yeah. or I've dreamt this. <laughs> you, but I'm 90% made it up. sure this is correct. Okay, then you guys don't need to read the comic. Uh, so yeah. we're done here and we can move on. <laughs> uh, no, as she sets out on a quest to discover the truth be behind an ancient Frey Lord myth, bounds will be broken, secrets will come to light, and ruin terror. Damn, will okay. forever be changed. This is awesome, by the way. Anyone that says, like, doing comic books with any, like, this is Marvel. Like, mm. this is so freaking it's cool. It's pretty good. I'm a massive comic nerd. I've been a comic nerd my entire life. You, you guys like into what? comics? Yeah, I do look like it. Yeah, yeah, I am into comics, but people at home are going to flame me for this. But Please. my dad was a huge DC comic book fan. Yep. Mm. So I'm a massive DC comic book fan. Oh, no one's oh. going to flame you, dad. Oh. No, hey, because hey, 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 that's the punishment. <laughs> that's the punishment. Oh, okay, you give it a little more. I'll give it a little bit of that. Yeah. <laughs> He's so afraid of the kiwi. Just, <laughs> no, but like recency bias. DC have done it. Uh, Without getting oh. political, yeah, they're not doing great. Yeah. Mm. Um, but good comics. Good comics traditionally. Uh, mm -hmm. So, to celebrate, we are going to make our own comic book front cover. Okay, well, to I celebrate. Thought you were, like, we're going to make our own yeah. comic book, and I'm like, <laughs> this is not good. Hang on a second. But okay. Yeah. So to celebrate. Yeah. Like, this is a good thing that we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've seen our art. Yeah. All our art is great. Yeah, uh, It's agree. not on camera right now, I believe, because if the camera is pointed directly at it, the camera explodes and the lens cracks. Um, <laughs> but we have painted here. So I thought that each of us could make a comic uh, book front cover about any topic we want, but, you know, keep it league adjacent, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, we'll reveal them throughout the oh, evening. Wait. But, uh, yeah. I have to be original in this. Like, we have to think of our own comic book cover. Yep. Damn. Oh, that's a lot of pressure. I know, because all you are, you're just a collection of memes in a shirt. That's like, you're just... <laughs> that's very rude of you. You're, you, know the ma you know the Matrix where Neo, like, sees, uh, sees what's-his-face? Uh, uh, not Gary Sweet, who's <laughs> the other Smith. Australian, fa famous Australian actor? Yeah, Agent Smith. <laughs> what is Bailey doing? Oh, Bailey's like, what the hell <laughs> is this? Like, what where is this like, going? Nick is speaking, God. Uh, that's what you are. You're just code. You're mm. Reddit code. It's like Papega. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so uh, we're going to put together, <laughs> no each of us are going to draw oh our God. own comic book. You guys can draw your own comic book front cover as well. Yeah. We're going to take submissions for the next 24 hours, and the best submission is going to win themselves a HyperX headset. These are the good ones. Cloud mm. Alpha, great one. Don't the, let it near a bunny rabbit. Don't let it near a bunny rabbit. Mm -hmm. Don't let it near... Bailey? Uh, Bailey? Or he'll, he'll a kiwi lick it. fruit. Or a kiwi fruit. Yep. Don't let it near me, because I'll take it. Mm. Uh, and these aren't the crappy ones that we give all the players in there. Like, they're using trash. This is the gooshy. <laughs> so you want this. Uh, so send us your comic book submissions using the hashtag IMOPL on Twitter, at OPL. The best one will win that. And then the runners-up, you know what? I'm going to announce it. The runners-up are going to get themselves some hex tech chests and keys and maybe a kiwi fruit. Yeah. I have a sticker. question. Yeah. When are we drawing? Are we drawing on camera again or are we drawing during the games? Uh, during game. I mean, you can do it whenever. You, you just, you're going to be here on all the day. couch all day. Mm -hmm. All day. So yours is due with mine at the end of the night. Wait, okay. I've got a game? 
You have you've got one game. Oh no! Um, but if, if you think I don't know when you would do it, like in the five to ten minutes in which I'm doing this, no, you're gonna reveal yours at the end of the next game, and okay. then uh, Rusty's gonna get uh, two games as well. So really, you're the loser. <laughs> <laughs> we we should have announced this beforehand. Am I still boom. doing the same one as Bryce? Like, is he starting the one I'm finishing? No, no, no. Everyone's doing their own individual. Okay, one. we're doing okay. our own ones. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. I'll do it. I'm gonna I have to. I'm gonna have to do it when you guys are on the when you guys are doing this. Oh. Do, you, do you reckon you can get one had, in? I I could try. I would love it. Yeah. I just had a great idea, guys. What mm-hmm. is it? You said league adjacent. Yeah. Now this is a League of Legends broadcast. Yep. We talk about some random stuff. We talk about some random the stuff. The OPL, yeah. like some some we competitive games. We literally open the broadcast talking about urinal grades. Is the twerking pig from Chinese New Year league adjacent? I would say yes if you yeah. can make a comic book about it. Because yeah, okay. it was it was on a league broadcast. Yeah, my I agree. question that's, is, please, they, they can't see that, but that's the piece of paper I assume we're drawing. Step on Reddit. Uh, that's a big piece of cardboard. Yeah, that is yeah. huge. You can okay. fold it in half. You have yeah, like you half. have that the power. magic. That that is. But don't is you? Pre- a it's easier to draw big two? than draw little. What is this? A you can two? make it whatever size you want. It's a sub Bryce. That's a all I got for you. Uh, so Yo-Yo says, how long does this guy advertise and shit? I really want to watch a game. Uh, they're all getting ready. You only need to put up with me for another minute or two. Um, so, yeah, I love you how can... people think that the changeover is just instantaneous. I know. It's not like all the players are sitting in a bunch of different rooms and they can all just start playing straight away. They need to walk in. They need to walk out. They need to plug things in. They need to unplug things. They need to do pee-pees. Do they pee on the grade or not pee on the grade? These are the questions that are running through their mind and I'm trying to buy them as much time as possible so that they can get good aim. All right, mate? So calm down. You can cut your piece of paper in half if you want to. All like right. We're a first time OPL viewer that is like asking that question. Very good friend. Getting attacked by the host is yeah. a weird experience. And particularly when <laughs> it's like. A specific OPL experience that you will not find yes, on any He doesn't other forget this moment around the world, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And particularly. The, the moment I enjoy, uh, I always enjoy, is whenever they go, hang on a second, they read the chat? <laughs> like, as it's happening. Yes, I do. We I'm have standards. Working. We have standards. Thank you very much, Pirate. Yeah, I know. We brought you on. Uh, <laughs> so it is time to move on to the next game of League of Legends. That, of course, God is Bombers damn. versus Legacy. Bombers, oh, by the no. way, guaranteed to be in the playoffs. Okay. Yes, playoffs. No matter what they do. So mm-hmm. Bombers, tank it so that my tips get even better. Wait, oh yeah, because you tipped Legacy for this one. I did. So I did what, what was the rationale behind this? Like you just really need to climb some points back on the no, ladder? No, you think Legacy, like you think this is like the time? So t- uh, two reasons. Okay. The first one was because everyone was like, oh, your tips are always so safe. And I was like, well, I may as well, you know, let's change yeah. it up. Yeah. I didn't know that the punishment this week would be de- eating delicious. one of the most delicious fruits ever, that mm. God ever made. Uh, <laughs> the second reason is that I feel like when the, when the underdogs get some p- support behind them, mm. then they tend to rise up. Oh, and so I'm saying, you know, I'm I'm backing you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you claimed the gravitas win. Yeah, yeah, and now you're setting yourself up to claim the legacy win as well. Yes, I am. Oh, you're so altruistic. And if they lose, I'm like, well, they were the underdog, <laughs> so there's nothing we could do about it. Um, sure. Can we take a look at the spicy tips though? Mm. I'm fairly certain I'm the only person that tipped I th- legacy. I think you are. It was four bombers yeah. and then a single legacy. Because what I realised is if Nick is the only person that also tipped the same thing as you this week, you probably tipped the wrong team. <laughs> <laughs> is the way that I'm reading it at mm, the moment mm. because, like, look, order probably tip the wrong team. Like, yep. <laughs> Fair I enough. Mean, yeah. Okay. Spicing it up. Yeah, but you know, this is we're, we're at this point in the split where I feel like the the punishments are getting more delicious, uh, mm. and I may as well just go for a caution to the wind. Yeah. If I like I mean. it. Yeah. Look, I, I like that. it very much. Um, as I was saying, bombers though guaranteed a place in the playoffs. Mm. So it doesn't matter what they do. They've just gone so well. Uh, the lowest they can hit, I believe, is fourth. And in saying that, on the flip side of the coin, if Legacy beat Bombers today, which would be a very impressive feat, I would say that they would nearly go into uh, Snowball Tip's favourites against Order as well. They have mm. one one scoreline against Order. Legacy aren't out of the playoff race yet. Mm, no, no, Teams no, 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 are no, no. acting as if it's a six-team uh, race, and I think there is a dark horse of a seventh team there. I mean, all in all, Legacy kind of need to start their run now, but yes. they have been building towards it. I feel like their individual players like Chaz mm-hmm. are actually starting to show some of that form that we wanted them to uh, show at the start. Yeah, because of, like if you watch our legacy behind the scenes, you can see it like in, on the front of the broadcast as well. Like This week, Chaz is like, man, like I had the perfect matchup. Like Zed into Corky is exactly what I wanted to play into Claire. And, oh, 17 and, health or whatever. And, yeah, and he like genuinely almost solo kills him level 6. Like They mm-hmm. are... They are 
picking things. They, they've been, in the past, a very safe team. It was Siva, Braum, like, in the earlier weeks, just blind picking for their new bottom lane. But they have been rising more so than a lot of people expect. And, yes, it somewhat does have to start now. It's going to start, if it does, with the hardest team in Bombers because mm -hmm. they just look out and out very good across the board. But... There's certainly potential here, right? This game is not a write-off. Yeah, and, you know, people say Bombers look good out now, good across the board. I would say that that is true in some games. In yeah. other games, their early game is not great. I would say Mimic and Balkan's early game has mm. been terrific. Yeah. But, you know, FBI and Rogue have been killed 2v2 in uh, bottom mm -hmm. lane. Ryoma has died 1v1 mid lane. Even without mid lane uh, jungle impact, these guys are making mistakes. So it's not mm. like they're an unbeatable team. It's just that you somehow have to throw Balkan, who right now is like rookie of the split, MVP, mm. most improved. Like, all, <laughs> just give him all the awards right yeah. now. Because yeah. uh, he's like carrying the absolute crap out of the early game. He's such a terrific player. And I'm not trying to retrofit my tip to make it work. <laughs> but Legacy, and even though it hasn't completely worked for them the last couple of weeks, they have been trying to draft games where they win early. Mm -hmm. And potentially yeah. that could take advantage of Bomber's weakness. Well, like That makes sense. Like Stylistically, this is a good matchup for Legacy. Because yes, as you say, in coach interviews, Denian's like, man, we're just going to pick the Callista. We're mm. going to pick the Zed. And yeah. like, because we Ribbon. can't, in a standard game, like we're not getting an even mid game. We want to snowball. And Bombers, even if like individually they're all very good, they have had weak early games, but they're not... A very early aggressive team. No, they're not. They're like standard. they don't. They don't do a lot in the early game. They don't apply a ton of pressure on like a team wide level. Whereas like someone more so to the style of Chiefs, like they're a very like early game macro team where they look for big plays. Yep. So like matchup wise, this makes sense. And they got red side. And they got red side, which yeah. is really important because you can get counter pick on uh, Mimic and Ryoma on a red side draft mm -hmm. if you play it well because you know that. Ryoma at the moment will just take the best available mid lane. Mm. And Chaz does have counters to those. So I'm excited yeah. about this. And if you want to see Ryoma take the best available mid lane, we are following him on Twitter. He's the POV stream for today. Today it is all mid laners. Uh, it was shock before. Uh, we've now got Ryoma this game. So head to the Twitter page at OPL to check that out. We're going to throw it over to the desk for game two. Thank you very much, Nick Boy. Let's get ready to rock and roll for this one. Bombers versus Legacy, as the desk said, or as the couch said. Mm -hmm. Bombers already locked in the playoffs, but they can still fight it out for some better spots, position themselves as high up the standings as they can. Oh, for sure. I don't think Bombers will ever want to lose a game, you know, on Summoner's Rift at all. They're looking so dominant right now. The powerhouse team of the OPL. We don't think anyone can realistically take them down, but it's always possible. League of Legends is a game where these miracles can happen. And, you know, Legacy, they've got three wins on the board. They're not a pushover team but they're absolutely the underdogs, and that may even be an understatement in a game like this against the Bombers. Very much the underdogs, but we have seen a couple of players that can certainly step up and carry. I've got my eyes on Chaz this game. I think I'm also looking at Paparize, who you know nearly took out Gravitas almost by himself by just split pushing to Victor on the ribbon. A couple of key picks might be all the difference. Let's see how the pick and ban shakes out, though. Zach, Nico off the board. None of those shenanigans. One Lucian team too late, through. maybe? Yeah, maybe a little bit, but Bomber's not taking any chances here. Not at all. So we've got the Zach, we've got the Nico, Aatrox and Lucian now to follow as well on the opposite side. Legacy with some mandatory bans, you would say, against the Bombers. Just meta champions, you have to take them off the board. The Aatrox is one that's specific to Mimic more so, but of course we have seen it picked and played in the jungle role. And Lucian's just a must take away from FBI. Someone who loves to win laning phase, and if Legacy want to fight early game with early game themselves, they need to get those good matchups. Fair enough. All right, Callista gets banned away by Bombers, so clearly they're paying attention to some of the strategies that Legacy will try to employ here. One last ban before we get into the picks, and we'll see what it ends up shaking out to be. We're still Ezreal up as well in terms of AD carries and their priorities with Callista and with Lucian gone. That may be the direction they choose to go. Yeah, Ezreal Tom Kench we saw it last game. Wouldn't be too surprised to see it come in once again for FBI and Rogue. Yeah, but, but the Tom Kench is banned. So is Lissandra and LeBlanc as potential picks. We'll see the direction that Bombers choose to prioritize here. Lissandra is usually that staple. Just lock it in because it's a first pickable champion type of thing. Legacy the ones who have to respond with something. I would personally like the Ezreal Braum, but... Anything's possible. Well, they're going to try to take away a little bit here from Balkan. It looks like on the hover, that's not necessarily going to be where they go at the end of the day. But if there's one thing I've learned watching this exciting rookie on the bomber side, it is you really can't take too much away from him. He'll do whatever on whoever. The Rek'Sai is the choice for Guts. Let's see what the next answer is. Yeah, Rek'Sai secured. Now we see the second role they have to reveal. Two different roles to what was locked in first here by the Bombers, and no flexes for Legacy if it is in fact the Thresh. Still very good priority champion, very strong champions in general. And on the hands of Crazy, I think it's another, another level. He has definitely shown great propensity to being able to sink some of those hooks. 
especially for someone swapping roles, he has adapted very quickly to the position that he is in. Playing Thresh is usually a staple of any support main, to be fair. He's just so fun as a champion. Hey, man, he may have had to take an accelerated course, but he passed all his classes. Bombers get the Alistair locked in for Rogue. Another very strong choice. Let's see what they pair up with it. Usually with the Alistar, you would see something like the Kaisa. That could be your 2v2 in the bottom lane. They don't need to show 80 carries here, however. They can hold that pick if they'd like. Depends on what priorities are available. You know, we mentioned that the Ezreal was up and there, so they'll choose to lock that one in for FBI. Take the priority pick away. Might as well. So, this Legacy, what do they pick in this next one? Because they will have to face off a couple of bands after this, and you have to think they'll want to save... Well, they could counterpick now with Chaz in the mid lane because they already know the Lissandra's there. At first, you're like, I, I would like if they matched AD carry, uh, first of all, so they don't get banned out in that role. It's already pretty hard to pick champions, but they've got a flex for themselves. So now there is... Oh, hang on. A flex on the flex. Uh, last they've second. They've swapped a mid. So there it's we go. It's going to be the Zoe for Chaz. So we have matched a role here. The Lissandra now matched by the Zoe. We've got supports. And as jungle and AD carry the difference in the first three picks here. So when you look towards the second ban phase, wouldn't be shocked to see some junglers taken away, perhaps, from Balkan. Someone who's very prolifically capable on the Evelyn, and the Nocturne is available. For Chaz, though, this is the first Zoe that he'll play in the OPL here, and that's interesting because he's been known as an Assassin player, and he'll take this Burst Mage uh, in up against Ryoma, so we'll see how that shakes out. But, as you mentioned, bans in the jungle seems to be the strategy, Nocturne off the table for Legacy. Yep, and alongside that Nocturne, you may see an Evelyn. Again, depends on if they're afraid of the pick into their composition. I think that Rek'Sai is actually one of those old-school picks that is very good into Evelyn for having the Tremor Sense. A bit longer range than that of, of course, the Invisibility Radius. So you'll have better tabs on a champion like an Eve, so it may not be seen at all. Yep. Once again, if you're uh, tuning in for the first time and you are a little shocked to not see a Silas, that is because he is not available for picking or banning, currently disabled globally. Evelyn is banned. So, focusing on the power picks of Balkan, we'll see what he ends up answering with. And do Bombers continue to do these target bans? The, the Paparized Riven does seem to be the kind of thing you definitely want to take off the table to avoid uh, some nasty side push pressure. J4 is the next. Yeah, I think J4 is actually another pick that you could say is directed towards Paparize a little bit as well. Of course, it's a champion that we've seen primarily in the jungle. But with the Rek'Sai locked in, you have to assume that that was a top lane ban. Support's also there, and that's two of the three roles that it would go into if you were going to put it anywhere. So they've gotten the Jarvan off. They've taken another champion away from Pap Rise, and we'll see the direction they choose to go now. And if Bombers are going to stay true to form and that they want to be team fighting, I would expect something like the Vladimir. But now they know their lane opponent is chased in top lane, so that's probably out of the question. Yeah, I kind of like this. Uh, we'll see how it ends up shaking out for Bombers. Let's see what the answer is for them. Now, Balkan has done a number of champions, but if they locked that Rengar, that'd be another one to tack onto the list. It would be shocking to see that it, one. I think it would be, for sure. Uh, okay, so it's the Poppy at the last second, and that should go top lane. Waiting for it to lock in and it can't trust them anymore. And uh, oh, Tri Trixie Hobbits is right, Rusty. But it is Poppy and the Kha'Zix to follow. So now the composition is secured for the Bombers. They've got the disengage and flank heavy tank in the top lane. And the reason Poppy is so capable in this comp is because they've already got a Lissandra and they've already got an Alistar. So their engage tools are available. Poppy's just going to be the big beefy member that stands in front. If he gets a flank off, he's very powerful, but is also preventative to wreck side dashes to Jace in hammer form to Thresh following hooks as well. And Legacy, they'll choose to go towards a Cassiopeia. Okay, slithering into it. the bottom lane. Are the bottom lanes always or Jace top. or yeah. Cass? Oh, we got a little bit of Swiffy Swap around. We'll find out. We still got about 15 seconds to decide. I like this from Legacy, a last minute switch up. That is a lot of damage, by the way, on that lineup. Can we talk about the burst and, and just consistent damage across the board from Legacy? We can talk about the burst. Look at the burst. Yeah, we great. A lot of burst. Good combo. Absolutely. I, I mean, it's a lot of like scaling damage as well. Jace is one of those champions that loves to go the lethality build, so he's usually quite good with some early item purchases. Tapers off from the mid to late stages of the game where a Cassiopeia can come up big as well. And it's an odd variety to me when I look at this. Also, they've got Double Ignite right now. It's an odd variety of like poke and siege that's possible with the Jace and with the Zoe, but it can be followed through with some other things as well. You know, like Cassiopeia being very protective, Rek'Sai threatening dives or preventing counter engages from their opponents as they still have Double Ignite. Yeah, I think they're going to stick with it right here. That's a kill lane in the bottom side. And you talk about winning early. Well, that's one way to try and secure it. 
Well, we'll see if Bombers can stop that one and cruise on the way to a 14th win here. And joining us to talk about that will be Weston Way. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good stuff. So let's just start it out with the obvious. You guys have already locked into the playoffs. Does that change anything in how you approach this game today? Uh, no, not really. We'll still be trying like our absolute hardest to win this game. Uh, the goal for us is to try and get that grand final seed. Um, so just locking ourselves into the playoffs doesn't really change too much for us. And um, what is the plan for you guys for the rest of the split, though? Not just getting into the first position, you know, but like, is it just focusing on individual stuff? Like, what is it the Bombers right now think is the most important thing to them? Um, I think the biggest thing for us is just like continuing to just have like a, a range of, I guess, diverse strategies, um, which are well practiced on, um, ready for when we head into the finals and into the final weeks. With the strategies that you've got on your screen as well, Western Way, there is some different stuff coming out from the opposing side, a little bit G2-esque, you might say. How do you think that your composition fares against them, and how do you beat it? Um, I think we'll be fine. Uh, I think that we have like quite strong laners, and I think that um, their composition like could be quite difficult for them to play. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it'll be fine. Fair enough. Um, I guess just going forward, is there any team that you've definitely got your eye on to kind of catch up to you here in the OPL before the gauntlet that gets underway? Uh, I guess the big match is going to be against the Chiefs tomorrow. Um, so I think we got like the two-point cap against the Chiefs, but we are one-on-one one with them. So, you know, being able to have the tiebreaker over them if we win tomorrow will, you know, pretty much secure us a grand finals position. Good stuff. Well, I, I'm kind of hoping to see uh, how that one all shakes out, but... Thank you for joining us, Weston Way, as we get underway here. Best of luck. Yeah. Thank you very much. You All never right. know what you're going to get against teams like Legacy. So it's, once again, you know, similar to what Gravitas did last game, it's good to see from Bombers and, and hear from them as well that they're just picking for themselves. They've got their standard comps. They think they'll fare perfectly fine against it as well. No cheese can deter the strength of a squad like the Bombers. Far too clean. I do find it a little interesting that they've gone for more utility role for Mimic, and I, I guess it's they do have utility when they play him on things like the Kennen, but it's also the damage potential that he dishes. This time, he's definitely going for more of of the uh, the setup for the fights, the disengage, and that means that the damage is going to have to come from elsewhere. Fortunately, they're not lacking yeah. damage. I mean, when you look at uh, Mimic as a player, if you think back to what he was like in, in years past when he was playing with Legacy, he was actually primarily that tank player. He was a very good poppy. He was a very good Ornn as well. You know, he can carry, and we've seen it from him in this split. His cannons are the ones that immediately come to mind. But you never look at Mimic picking a tank and saying, uh-oh, like, that's different for him. Really, it's going back to what he knows. Which means it's also comfort for Bombers and for the couple of players on the Guts Balkan will run into the Rift Scuttler, and Guts is going to move in. Chaz closing the gap as well. Balkan forced to flash early. That's a nice play by Legacy. Yeah, no Kha'Zix at level 2 puts a point in their jump unless they're pulling some craziness, you know, getting over walls. So does have to flash himself out, but also very good tracking from Guts, knowing where the jungler of Bombers will be. Being able to counteract that as well just by standing still and waiting patiently for Chaz to get the first move from mid lane. And because Chaz is able to rotate, they force that flash with no hesitation. Definitely going to have to keep an eye on Legacy's movements early on because as you pointed out, as they talked about on the couch, this is going to be the strategy. Try to get it ahead early. Uh, we talked about double ignites. It did get switched away at the last minute. Crazy does have the exhaust. Thank with God, they had still, four seconds yeah. left and I couldn't tell. It, it still looks like they should be probably trying to go all in a little Whoa. bit. Speaking of all in, Caprice finds himself on the wrong side of the tower. Mimic is just going to batter him as he's got the bigger hammer, it turns out. And at three and a half minutes in the game, a Poppy has forced the Jace to go back. That's not something you would often see. That's a feels bad man if, if you're you think Way back to Worlds, I think it was 2015 maybe, there was a Poppy Jace meta just circulating everywhere. And you'd always say that it is like Jace gets a big CS advantage, harasses you. It's range versus melee, right? Like it's a tank versus a damage dealer. So Jace should naturally get those advantages. And not the case so far in this game. The teleport advantage now for Mimic and a sizable health health amount to stay in this lane for a while. He's actually in a very comfortable position. Yeah, he is, and he's been able to dodge out Shock Blast as well. Had to keep an eye on that up there as things stay that way. Checking in with the rest of the map, you can see Rogue went on a bit of a roam himself, trying to match some of the vision that Legacy had established Riverside. FBI more than happy to keep pushing forward on his own. So far, hasn't been punished. And oh. we talked about that being a potential weak point of the Bombers' early game. Well, clearly not happening this game. 
And Mimic does choose to go back to base and reset with his teleport here. Comes in and takes a chunk of his health. There was a world where he extended his stay in the top lane just to, you know, lose some health, but get some extra gold before his first reset, before his first recall. But he wants a cloth armor, and he already had the potions. I think that was the amount of gold exactly that he wanted to be able to get back onto the map. And look at the pressure he already has. He's fighting in minions, though, but so is Mimic. Let's see. Paprise has Rise. no mana, though. He's got a flash. He might have to use it. No mana at all as he just keeps getting knocked Whoa. against the wall. The flash, the wall bang, and Mimic with the outplay for a first blood. It's just too easy for Mimic here in the top lane. Nothing can stop this man. The flash E into the wall, stunning him down. No flash available from Paprise. And he was seeing the kill in his eyes, Mimic, and he chases it down. Doesn't want to get the flash forth. He wants the money. And he gets it. Picks up that nice little bit of gold here, and Bomber's already off to a good start, you can see. Now taking a look across the map, Balkan's in the bottom side of the map as well, which means Praetith and Crazy are not going to be able to push too far forward. Guts sitting in his own jungle, but near the border of it. And you know, that's the thing that makes Bombers just so terrifying to play against. You could get a flash early game in the jungle. Maybe you get some control in there. Maybe you get a kill in the early game on one side of the map, but the other side's winning. You know, and, and amazingly, no matter what happens, and of course you saw what happened here, he presses the W, prevents Paprise from jumping in. That's the go button. And this flash is just picture perfect here from Mimic. Absolutely oh. perfect. He hit all his buttons at the same time too. Mimic, brilliant playing, gets himself that gold. And yeah, Paprise really should have been playing a lot further back. Well, he wanted to clear the wave to reset. Clearly, Paprise. If you're going to use your melee Q on minions knowing that the Steadfast Presence is there from a Poppy, you're playing a dangerous game. You want to try and trick the Poppy, you know? You want to try and play those mind games. But he reads it too easy. So, good start for Bombers. Now, on the map, you have to think both teams are going to be keeping an eye on the Infernal Drake that spawned. We've had some pretty good Dragon RNG today already, Rusty. We have a lot of action dragons. Of course, it hasn't actually proven that dragons have result in, resulted in victories by any means if last game is what Small we're going Small sample on. size. Uh, I that like action, four to action zero dragons. dragons. Action dragons is a good one. That should be the name of our comic book. Are you making one? Uh, I am now. Oh, hook on the Alistar. A little lasso. FBI gets ignited from Spell Thieves. Cheeky little fake ignite, true damage, very annoying to deal with. And of course, Praetith has a second ignite of his own. Note that that means he does not have heal, does not have any kind of resistances to keep him alive. It's all about dealing damage. Speaking of dealing damage, Lissandra, Ryoma going all in on Chaz, who now starts to turn it around with those miasmas. Instant cleanse out. He's going to have to slither away, though. The minion damage is pretty real. We are choosing to fight in a cannon wave with so many minions. Lissandra having all the AoE to clear them down does prove to be very painful for Chaz in this case. It wasn't a flash use, just a cleanse. I felt like with the cleanse as well, he was looking for the kill. He was hunting. If that Q connected, perhaps there was a kill threat available. But not to be seen this time around. Very defensive and scaling build here from the Lissandra. Oh, is not sighted as he gets the isolation onto Guts. Still on the level 5. Blast Cone can't take it. They'll both go. And Balkan tastes the fear of Guts. And just so clean here from the Bombers in general. They get wards everywhere on the map. A single ward is all they need. The map opens up. They get a skirmish in mid lane. They get a control ward in the top jungle from it. And then suddenly that's a kill. Bottom lane still holding on as well with CS leads. Even with the pressure that you just saw from Praetith. And look at top. I mean, there really is no words to describe how bad this feels if you're a Paprise, that a Poppy at level 7 is proxy farming your wave. Yeah, that's, that's, no, a, that's is, a real feels bad. The word is yikes. Yeah, well, at least one yike. We're, we're coming on two at this point. And yike. Once again, oh, FBI dodging the hook. Prey of taking some damage, can't heal up through this. So this early game's definitely started to get out of hand here. It's a, over a 2,000 gold lead for the Bombers. Two kills in the pockets as well, and well, they're going to have to find some kind of way to reset. And it's not wrong to hope, you know, to see more from Legacy in an early game. It's something that they are working on. It's something that we've heard from the coaching stuff that they're trying to get better at as well. Or focus on as one of their primary strengths. It's a building. It has been a building split more or less for Legacy. I think they've ta taken a lot of risks with players that have roll swapped around. They've been building some synergy. They definitely always have an outside chance. It never feels like they're completely out of things, but they have to start stacking I mean, wins if they want to get into the playoffs. Yeah, and that was the hope that we had coming into a game like this. Like, you, you think about it, you know that realistically the odds are against them. Be like, I know they want to do early game. You know, like, we know that they want to focus in this area and Bombers are an early game team, but that's the thing. 
They're an early game team that's 13 and 1 on the ladder. They're an early game team that is so hard to beat at that point in the game. And you're just trying to match them where they're strong, you know, not beat them where they might be exploitable. That's tough stuff. Papre's going to get the minions pushed into his own lane, but he's still got to be careful, especially playing around his own turret. He can just get knocked into it with a level disadvantage as well. And Bombers are perfectly content to just let the status quo build slowly but surely. They've got Balkan soloing on the dragon. Well, Rogue just kind of body blocks in the river here. Chaz is going to have to check into it. Yeah, Kha'Zix level 6 with the Q Evolve. Rogue also hovering the area. And Bombers, they'll start the dragon before they even clear the vision. That's how far ahead they feel, how strong they feel in the present moment. You know, level lead for jungle is just being evolved at level 6 is all the Kha'Zix is really after. Yeah, and Balkan just completely effortlessly almost recovers from the early game combination where Guts and Chaz jumped on him and forced him to burn his flash. Really not perturbed. The rookie coming out of Korea has impressed on so many levels. And I know we talk about him every week, but that's just because this dude just never seems to have a bad game. I don't want to say it's going to be one of those games, Pyro, but I think it's going to be one of those games. You just did. There's only 2,000 gold between these teams. You know, it's not the most significant amount, but they're not contesting dragons. That's they're not more contesting than Rift Herald. They're not trading objectives with pushes because they can't get vision. They can't control the map. They're losing in well, lanes. Yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely coming up on double yike territory. And it's a little bit of a roughie, for sure. Legacy, you know, I mean, I don't think you ever go into this game thinking, yeah, we're definitely going to gonna smack bombers around, for sure. Like, it's just one of the more lopsided matchups in terms of records that we've had so far here in the OPL. But they're definitely teams they can, you know, they can definitely look to challenge. And you got to wonder, do they just start thinking about tomorrow up against order? Do they do they check out of this game, or are they going to just keep pushing? Obviously, oh, it's super early. <laughs> but That's going to be a push tower. There is a point where you do check out. However, I don't think they're at that point yet. But it's always getting closer. Teleport also used in the top lane. So they want to actually secure this one, it feels like. Yeah, they do. And where is Guts? He's just coming on up. the edge of the corner of your screen now. They'll defend. He's also going to sit on wards as well, too. This is another thing that Bombers have been able to do, is secure a lot of vision. Uh, some of it inside of the Legacy jungle. Yeah, well, most of it, honestly, has been started to be planted more aggressively. You can see Legacy's vision is on the bottom half of the map, the, their bottom blue side quadrant that they are protecting. Yet, even with all that vision control, a Rift Herald summoned forces a Rek'Sai to the other side of the map, and suddenly, you know, these things are... His vision they have isn't as useful as... Oh, hang on. Rogue does get chunked out a bit as he ha got hit with the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. He throws down the ultimate. He's fine, though. We can walk away. He's cruising. Yep. He's all good. He's having a good old time. Mukau, Alistar. I don't think that's the best Chroma between you and me mm. and every other person that is listening. You don't like it, huh? I just said I don't think it's the best. Okay. All right. I think that is the best skin on Alistar. Okay. But I think the pink one is better. Well, that's a pretty good one, too. See, my my biggest beef is that he didn't. we didn't see him Ow. cowbell at the beginning of the game as a true shot comes in and it takes crazy almost down to zero. It is uh, an obligation they, they, to you cowbell. Can't, you can't expect to win if you don't cowbell. Just that's as a thing. Reason, yep. Oh, geez, this is this is hurting. Mimic just shrugs off tower shots. <laughs> oh no, make it stop. Legacy have to lane swap. They have to do something. You know, like you can't just sit here and lose like this. But I really wonder if they bring a Zoe and a Thresh to top lane, can they even pressure this poppy? You have to hope that they would do something sooner or later. I mean, they're they're trying to just build well, up items, but they're falling so far behind. That's a viable decision to make at this point. You know, you could actually just Try and get a push in on the bottom lane like they just did, you know, force the ult out of Rogue, then clear a wave, and just go. They're not doing it, though. Just disappear back to base. Oh. Every time he gets denied, I'm bringing the hammer down. It just hurts, and we're going to check away from it, but Papri Thank is still kind of forced away. Balkan is going to take away another red buff, and with the tower plating soon to fall, uh, and Bombers have claimed a lot of it. Balkan flashing forward, knocked away this time. It's a flash for flash, though, once again. You take those trades, especially with the current state. Spellcard is he does not hovering. Care. He doesn't want to let Paprise get to the turret. He wants to make sure this turret goes down. They've just decided that he's not going to have a good day. The mimic decided, and Belkan said, "Good idea." But it doesn't help that Paprise had such a tragic start to laning phase. Well, you pointed out um, a little earlier on some of the reactions from uh, some of the players and the, the speed of them. Guts has definitely had trouble. I think getting the jump on other laners in time for ganks as there's a big play down bottom.
check him at that point in a second. Rogue burning down. There's the exhaust. The Prey Seeker. Oh, he's on. He's going to go for it. Rogue should fall. Guts manages to take him out. So this time, his reaction is spot on. Unfortunately, he's caught under tower without a whole lot else to do. And the turn from Bombers is deadly. And it's instant. The trade is there. The teleport comes out. It's still 4,000, but it's not a perfect game. They have been able to deny that one at 14 minutes in. 4-1 to one now is the kills. That they did. Balkan back in the mid. Paprice trying to pick up as much as he can. His farm. There's so much farm on that Kha'Zix. He's got a lot. Well, Ixies. those guys. 112. Oh, look at the gold difference oh between my the junglers, God. too. Yikes, again. He's sitting on a whole item worth. Mid's the closest. There's this gold lead for crazy in the bottom lane. It's just the amount of time that rogues had to spend running away from the damage they're putting down. But at the same time, the gold lead is significant for FBI. So that's the trade-off that you take. Mid is the closest. And I don't know your opinions on this, but I would rather be the Cassiopeia in the Lissandra lane for the most part. I, I tend to agree with you. I think especially you're going to have a little bit more as time goes on for sure. Uh, Rogue, oh, no. Chaz chasing him down. He wants the kills, but unfortunately he gets Cold Feeder. Cold Scales at the last second. They do turn their attention over to Balkan once again, going invisible, hopping the wall, and Legacy come up empty-handed. They cop a true shot barrage on the way out as well. Praetith, I'm pretty sure, auto-attacked the explosive plant to go over the wall for the kill on Rogue, and just didn't go over the wall because he was out of the radius of the cone. So, Rogue lives. Uh, yep. Yep. I feel like and this is dragon. business as usual for Bombers. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's just it's awkward that that's the one takeaway I have from that fight, but that was super tragic. It could have been another kill for Legacy that does go awry. Yeah, I, th I think it is it is worth giving credit where it's due that Legacy aren't just sitting back and letting the game slip away. They are trying to make moves. They are trying to make plays, but they are already significantly behind here. And this will be one of those games where Rogue will be the sacrificial cow in a lot of the team fights going forwards and engaging. There's a, a lot of threat that he'll have to soak up, a lot of damage that he'll have to just purely tank for his team to be sitting behind him and doing all the work. And that is only, of course, if Mimic is not there. At this stage, Mimic is probably having far too much fun dealing with a Jace in top lane and doesn't want to leave. Yeah. He just wants to pick up farm. He wants to be left alone. He's not getting the chance. Chaz is always sniffing around this map to see if he can find something here. And he has been the most even player. He has had one of the quieter games here. Pap Rise trying to turn on to Mimic, but man, oh, that so shield, sad. the steadfast presence is up. And hey, it's his best buddy, Balkan. They're going to sandwich him. Nowhere to go. And juggling aggro, it don't mean a thing. That's and they're just so knocking sad. down towers. That's just so sad. You know, I don't think I've seen a top laner bullied this hard without recourse. Well, since Dyrus Rise, was man. on TSM. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fair. Oh, God. Rogue yells at him and says, stay back as the hook goes wide. I have fences around me. <laughs> Top lane, of course, is up in eight seconds, so they're able to get the inner turret right now at 17 minutes. Here oh. comes Legacy, though. All right, they're setting they the trap. They know Ali has no ult. They can kill him. Exhaust onto FBI. Let's well. see if they can make it on. Throw down the Miasma. Crazy going low into the box. He goes, and in comes the Poppy from the back line. They are going to be able to turn it here once again. Chaz taken down and hammered into the ground. It's a one for a three trade. Balkan is looking for another one. Can they clean up Praetith? He hops, he skips, and the portal cannot jump away. And the blue screen comes up for Praetith. So once again, Bombers, they'll collapse. Every time Legacy tries to make a play, it is red and it is bested. Mimic has a trinity force. You know, given how much Paprise has been just completely bashed around, I'm sure he's probably looking around himself wondering why he's the one who actually lived through all of that. Well, that's because he is nowhere near a fight. Yeah. Doesn't have Smart teleport. sense, it seems like. Doesn't have the ability to get down here for the play. Crazy gets blasted. Look at the damage that Mimic starts to put out here as well. Some auto attacks. Like, this is... This is a Trinity Force Poppy, and there's only one yeah. time you build that as Poppy, and that is when you are snowballing and you are fed. Yeah, so uh, I definitely have to uh, eat a little bit of crow here, Rusty, because I talked about Mimic playing tanks and going back to that comfort level. No, he is not a tank, and this is why. He's just smacking him down. Who's next? Styling on people, Don't and there's the Poppy instead. Copter. Doesn't even care about it. Oh, he got hooked. We need more bad guys to kill him. Legacy coming through once again. That Get true shot crazy gets oh. annihilated. And Bombers just cannot be stopped at this point. I think there's a little bit too many people there for Mimic to continue to fight that one. Nah, but he's fine. He's okay. He burned his flash, <laughs> yeah, but he's still okay. out. I mean, head in the hands for Guts as well. All the kills, potentially yeah. there. Good jump. 
Ball come to soft. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is um, this is a roughie for Legacy. They're at a 10,000 gold difference of almost at 19 minutes in the game, so to say the least. Bombers are just really stamping their foot down and saying we are the best, and this is an example of that. Just playing League of Legends through laning phase, getting a lead through laning yeah. phase, and you can see how hard it is to beat them when they get that lead. And this is the thing. We always say this about Bombers. Now you're seeing it happening in the moment as well. Right, a single lead is all they need. Let me let me ask you, Rusty, to to put on your your teacher hat. Let's say you're grading League of Legends teams in the OPL on on all their performances, and, and you were a mean teacher, right? Let's just say you're a mean teacher. You don't want to give anybody an A plus. What is the BS reason you give Bombers an A minus? <laughs> it's a hard question, I know. Oh man. What what can you criticize them for? That's what I'm really getting at. I mean, how do you criticize a team that's 13-1 and the only game they lost was like in week Exactly. Two? Like is there anything is there anything these guys aren't doing right? I mean, I think that there is a time and a place where they will, you know, get carried away in games a little bit too aggressively, perhaps. Their their style. And this is why I always liked Bombers and Mammoth being like the top two potential teams. I felt like one was offense, one was defense in style. I think innately, if you're a team that's very aggressive and offensively focused, you will make mistakes. But that's their style, right? So, like, if I'm coming up with a BS reason, it'd probably be that. But. Okay. Got you on the record. I'm just kidding. I won't say anything. Yeah, no one heard that. No, not at all. And the Baron going down means that it's even easier to knock the towers down. Bombers just continuing this charge here. And it, it just, it does feel business as usual for them. I don't, really, the OPL. I don't really think we get an opportunity to see the Bombers with a front-to-back 5v5 team fight, Like, ever. We've seen a couple of them, you know. We saw the, the flash or the teleport from Kennen getting into the back line. That's when a team like the Chiefs pushes them. And they still team fought incredibly well. But, like, that's so rarely seen from this team. As, here we go. Whoop. Chaz using everything in the book to try and get out of harm's way. And... He will. A little bit of help. Lassoed back from Crazy, but now the tower's not so lucky. Meanwhile, Balkan does get shut down, but Legacy have to make tracks to get back to their own bases. The numbers advantage for Bombers means they're opening it up here on the bottom side. Hook goes wide. In goes Praetith. They've got the Ezreal asleep, but the rest of Bombers forming a big wall. Oh, that hurt. They him. may just disengage and leave the inhibitor alive. Crazy, calm down. Oh, they're going to go back forwards. They got too much damage down. Oh, and they took down Crazy. Nowhere for him to go in that. The poke in the burst just a little too much. Inhibitor going to fall. The FBI. He's still going. Cannot be stopped right now is the AD carry of Bombers, and the inhibitor does fall down. That's a two-item Ezreal. One's the Trinity Force, though. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Trinity Force champions when they're snowballed, Ezreal is another <laughs> example, as is the Poppy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, thousand indeed. gold bounty on the old mimic up there as well. So it's like you were talking about with like maybe there's there's a little bit of over aggression happening in individual plays. Balkan gets into a 1v2 and he gets popped, but it didn't matter because they got the inhibitor anyways. Had numbers advantage. And Balkan was always a place that, you know, if you were going to, at the start of the season, say, how do you beat this Bombers squad? Like, how do you beat a team of just five really good players? Well, we didn't know that it was five really good players. We knew that it was four and a Balkan. So he was always the one that you would have to scrutinize first. And he's really gone above and beyond what you'd expect for a solo queue player in his first split of competitive League of Legends. Doesn't seem like a solo queue player. He has his moments, but don't we all? I think that's uh, entirely fair. He's definitely stepped up to the plate for this Bomber squad and a big part of why they now sit at the 13 and one record near to be 14. Just need to close the Jaws on this game right now, and Legacy on their last legs, trying desperately to hold on to their base. Orioma gets caught by the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Praetith gonna chunk him down half health, but that's about all he can yeah, deal, and now they turn died. it around. Orioma going in and says, you take half my health bar, I'll finish the job. FBI starts off by taking down Paparai's Guts has fallen as well. The double kill, it does get turned on to Balkan. Chaz manages to find one, but the base is bare. There's nothing left for Legacy to do. Trying to defend desperately. Praetith just doesn't have the consistent damage. Oh. Jumped on by Mimic this time around. Chaz going back to the base, slithering as fast as he might. Ryoma taking all the tower shots and just doesn't care. He will fall to the tower, but it doesn't matter. There's no more defenders here. And Bombers with the ace at 24. This might be the fastest game we've seen in the OPL split one. 
and the Nexus will fall down and Bombers cruise control all the way to a 14 and one record here in week eight. When they decide to hit the Nexus. There we go, they got it. A six zero and three record as well as the end score for Mimic. And another player of the Bombers steps up to the plate and says it's my game to carry once again. And he does it through the early game as a tank in a matchup that you would say is very hard. Not all the time, but in the early game. And he manages to win when it is hard. That's just, the Bombers are just dangerous right now. They are so scary. It's the pedigree of champions for sure. There's a long ways to go before we get through the gauntlet, but they're already locked into it. The way they're playing, it's going to be hard to see anyone unseating them for that top spot. It's still possible. Chiefs have a one-on-one -on -one record. If they do beat them tomorrow, things start to get into the realm of possibility. But Bombers are just scary good. Anything is possible, but it is definitely unlikely, to say the least, for the Bombers if they ever get unseated at all. There's a chance they lose games. I'm very curious to see how Bombers do in a best of five format as well. Now they are locked into the playoffs. We'll get to see that through the gauntlet. If they have to make a run is to be determined. But so far, in best of ones, they just look clean. They do indeed. Now Legacy, smiles there, shaking some hands. They still got chances to make it into the playoffs, but it is increasingly slim at that, and they'll have to really start to level up in short order to make it happen. Yeah, super rough game there from Legacy. You could see a lot of moments of frustration. It just felt like anything they tried, there was no answer. You know, nothing was possible. They make a play, the response is too good from their opponents as well. Certainly the case. Bombers drop bombs on them. Let's send it back over to the couch to talk about that one. The Nick Boy bump didn't work. The what? <laughs> the Nick Boy bump. Where I backed oh. the other team, and it's like, oh, we got yeah. your boys. Didn't work. In fact, it could have worked against them. Yeah, absolutely, because that game was just rough. Like, yeah. it started early, top side of the map. It's like a Jace into a Poppy. Mimic's literally getting solo killed, and, like, from that point, it never looked like a uh, Legacy just had a way back into the game. Yeah. yeah, and the funny thing about this was, right, is that they, I actually think that they did a really good job of neutralizing certain part, points of the map. That's Legacy. Mm. So they picked themselves this Zoe lane, and, like, they just played to go down 20 CS. Like, they just didn't want to give the Alistar any opening into that lane. Like, they were hooking from afar, they were looking for poke. Mm -hmm. But they were never contesting, like, every CS that was falling yeah. down. Mid lane, Cassiopeia beats uh, Lissandra Liss early, mm -hmm. especially when you're able to take cleanse and she's not because she has to take teleport for, mm -hmm. like, the uh, early game shove. So, like, there were things there that would work. But once again, like, if Mimic gets a solo kill at level 3, then Balkan gets a solo kill, a kill at level 5 you're probably not going to beat the Bombers lineup from mm. that point. Because they just had complete control over the top side of the map. They push in, they take that turret. Mm. Then they push in, they take control of all the top side of the jungle. Meanwhile, FBI and Rogue are like getting dove because there's like desperation plays and they just have double teleport to like bail them out of every single play. So yeah. like, I kind of think that we have, because they're so quick at closing out the game once they do get ahead, we've kind of misdiagnosed this team. I don't think they're like overly aggressive. I don't mm. think they're impulsive. I think this is actually a pretty calculated team that plays around like a really strong top side of the map and then just gives their other two carries the opportunity to scale and come into the game and then they just play pretty standard around objectives. And this game, like although it was very quick because Legacy didn't put up much resistance, unfortunately, still was a pretty standard closeout. They didn't yeah. do anything. Like they're not diving like bases with like mm, all mm, out of mm. turrets up. They're just playing the game the way it's supposed to be played and they're better than people at it. So they're winning very easily. Better at people than everyone else winning easily. That is the Bombers motto. And one of those Bombers is at the desk right now. It's FBI. Motto should be easy. Clap. Good game to you guys. And it really did look just so effortless. And I, I know I feel like I ask this just about every week from Bombers. But but in this in this particular game, you guys really showcased how far ahead you are of, of some of the pack. What is it about Bombers that makes you guys just like two, three steps ahead of everyone? Um, honestly, I don't think... We're, yeah, yeah, I think we are definitely better than everyone else. And um, I think it's because individually we're all pretty sound. We're, I think we're like top two in pretty much every role. Um, and also we're kind of just trusting each other to carry. So you don't have to do more than you have to do. Just everyone just plays their own game. Like we slowly gain leads. And then from there, it's pretty easy as a team to just close it out pretty cleanly, I think. That's fair. Now, I, I asked your coach, Westernway, a little bit about uh, what you guys were looking to do going into the last couple of weeks since you're already locked into the playoffs. And you said yeah. things don't really change a whole lot. You guys get to test out a couple different strategies. It seemed like you're banning away some of these like weirder things that we have been seeing, though, like the Nikos and stuff. Is that the sort of champions that you're a little bit not so solid at playing against right now? Um, yeah, definitely, because uh, I think Nico is kind of a new thing. Like, Not many people have played it, so this week um, we didn't get much practice first. So it's just kind of like a curveball that we don't want to deal with, um, although they did throw the Zoe bot, so I guess yeah, we can't ban everything. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, there's always a few curves coming out from a couple of teams. Now, a team that is the closest to your level, Chiefs, they're coming up tomorrow. 
Do you expect them to have any uh, cheeky strategies, or is it just going to be pound for pound, straight up League of Legends? Uh, I honestly think Chiefs are the other top two team that play pretty standard, so I don't really think they have that many curveballs to throw at us. Maybe uh, Ray's in the bot lane, he might have a spicy pick or two, but uh, aside from that, I think they play pretty conventionally. Fair enough. Now, uh, how confident do you feel at uh, being able to take them down? They are the only team that have beaten you guys so far this split. Uh, we're definitely really confident. I think um, we've been playing really well and practicing really hard this week, so... I think it's going to be a pretty clean game tomorrow. Oh, looking forward to it. Well, thank you for joining me. Congratulations again, FBI. Back to the couch. Back to the couch, indeed. Welcome, Rusty. Hey. How are you? I'm happy I'm now next to my 